Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome to the first edition of the Pure Connect Communities Q&A show. My name is Matt Lawson. I am your online community manager. And today, brand new show. Uh, if you're not familiar with what we do in the show, the concept is pretty simple. Each episode, I'm going to sit down with a Pure Connect expert and answer your questions in the community. Well, at least to the best of our ability. But you'll learn more about that as time goes on. Um, this week, I'm really excited to have Chuck Rasmussen joining us for this uh, first episode. And what are we waiting for? Let's go ahead and meet him and start answering some questions. Chuck, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, Matt. Thanks for having me. Oh, no worries. Um, real quick, before we kind of get into questions, can you just tell me a little bit about your role at Genesis? Sure. Uh, I've been with the company for 13 years, and uh, my role is uh, interaction op uh, optimizer. Uh, I go out to customer sites to uh, get them up and running using optimizer uh, through through our um, professional services. Awesome. Very fun. So um, I can't promise all of the questions today will be about Optimizer, <laughs> but I hope for your sake they are. Um, <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> no worries. Chuck, one of the things that I've been doing in the show is we actually, um, so that I don't have to choose an icebreaker, I ask for community members to give me icebreakers to ask our guests. That way we really get to hear from customers throughout the whole episode. And so what I've done is I take all the icebreakers that I get and I put them in this little bowl. And I mix them up like this, and then I pull one and I ask it to you randomly. So let's see what we came up with. This question is, oh, this is an interesting one. What is your favorite childhood memory? Ooh, favorite childhood memory. Uh, Keep it PG. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a hard PG-13. <laughs> uh, probably, um, probably Christmas and more so, uh, uh, thinking about my brother. Uh, he, he was older than I am and, and he was in the military uh, in the, uh, serving in the Navy at, at that time. And, uh, I used to always get good Christmas presents from him, even though he wasn't home. Uh, one year, uh, I remember him giving me a, a bicycle. Uh, another year I, um, had had an accident and, uh, uh <laughs> it, it was kind of a weird accident. I was, uh, sledding, uh, down a hill and I hit a tree head first. And so obviously I'd been wow. in the hospital, uh, but, but before Christmas. And so that particular year I was, uh, had uh, black and blue eyes, but, uh, he, he gave, given me the, uh, guns and holster and everything for, for, for Christmas. So, yeah, I, I, th I think that's probably one of my favorite childhood memories. That's really cool. That's a great answer. Uh, thank you for sharing. Um, I've taken it as easy as I can on you. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's all uphill from here. Chuck, what do you say? Let's hop in the community and answer some questions. Let's do it. Chuck, cool. Uh, really glad you could join us. I'm personally really looking forward to learning more about Optimizer. I just got introduced to it uh, through a WEM, uh, Ask Me Anything, that we did uh, a few weeks ago. And since then, I've kind of been curious. So it's great that you're here. And um, I'm even more excited because when we do this show on the Pure Cloud platform, one of the things customers always ask for is more best practices, kind of how to get started and stuff like that. And I understand today you wanted to talk a little bit about shift rotations because you see um, a lot of customers struggle with that as they're getting set up on Pure Connect, is that correct? That's, that's correct, Matt. So uh, I'd, I'd like to go ahead and, and uh, go into it. And, and on uh, shift rotations, uh, uh, a lot of times pe people wonder what is it for? And so, uh, it, it, you know, maybe it's a case where, where uh, uh, agents have to work every other weekend or every third weekend or, or things of that nature. So it's, an air, it's a way for, 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 for uh, customers to, uh, to uh, set things up and then not have to go back week after week after week and, and, and worry about which, which schedule am I should look at. So before I go into the shift rotation, I'm going to hit shifts real quick here. And the, the two that, that we're using today are no, no, week, uh, uh, no weekend rotation and, uh, and a Saturday rotation. So if we look at the no week rotation, I have a schedule where I work Monday through Friday and, 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 everything. and then my other one that I'm going to rotate with is one where I work on a Saturday from 6.30 in the morning for eight hours, and it is a required shift. And then the other days of the week, Optimizer is gonna turn around and I'm still working a five day week, but Optimizer is gonna pick which of the five day, uh, uh, other four days do I work Monday through Friday to, to uh, meet that, that, that need. And then when I go back and I actually look at my shift rotation, so I have one here that, that is, um, on the top half is where you set up the rotation. And this particular one here is set up with one, one, one no week uh, rotation and one Saturday rotation. So again, it's going to give me my every other day. 
and from from the so again on the top half is where you set up the rotation and then on the bottom half is where you assign people to that rotation so in this particular case i have alan graham working uh this rotation and it doesn't really matter which uh, uh or where i start the rotation because when i go back and look at it from an optimizer perspective i can view my report and it tells me it, this, this particular one was originally set up back in may i can turn around and say that for the next three weeks uh for this week uh, uh, alan is working his saturday rotation Next week, he does not work a, a Saturday, and the following week, he works Saturday again. So this shows me what my rotations are go, going forward. So hopefully that will help. Um, again, like I say, it's very easy to set up. You, just, you set up the rotation on the top, and then you assign your agents on the bottom. So ho hopefully uh, 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 customers won't be as, uh, scared to use the shift rotations. That's a great topic to talk about. And also, especially with the holidays coming up and stuff, I imagine there'll be a lot of people maybe using this for the first time. So terrific way to jump in and get started. Um, and if you have any questions, always feel free to post them in the community. We're here to help. We're getting ready to hop into a new section of the show where I ask you questions that have gone unanswered in the community to see if you have any advice to share. It's time for Stump the Expert. We love it when questions in the community get great answers, but these questions fell on hard times. No one was able to answer their plea for knowledge. Can our ragtag group of experts provide a helping hand? If not, there's still hope. We'll shuffle the question to our bounty board where community members can saddle up and take their best shot at answering. If they receive the best answer, they can save the day and earn some lucrative GCAP points for doing so. Giddy up. Chuck, this first question comes to us from Baden. And he wanted to know about minimum schedule optimization granularity. Jaden writes, hi all, is it possible to change the schedule optimization granularity to one minute? It is currently set at five minutes in our environment. Reason for asking is that our staff work shifts of eight hours and 23 minutes, pretty specific. And we currently manually add the three minutes after the shift has been generated, which as you can imagine is very cumbersome. Um, what do you think, Chuck? Any advice for our friend Jaden here? Unfortunately, that is a, 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 a limitation of optimizer. So uh, when, when you are in a particular schedule, if you go to display options and go to the, the display tab, you have your granularity in here. Unfortunately, that is a five minute or by default, it is uh, set for five minutes uh, uh, options. And so the, the, the least granularity you can get would be five minutes. Gotcha. Um, so Jaden, sorry for the bad news. This next question comes to us from Alex. Alex wants to know about interaction desktop slash connect using Outlook add-in. Alex Wright, does anyone have familiarity with the Outlook add-in using it with interaction desktop and or connect? Specifically, I found that I cannot install it as we use Outlook 2016. So we got hit with the Outlook 2010 must be installed to apply this product error, which halts install. We tried to stay current-ish and have the latest Microsoft software for our clients to use. So just curious as to whether this add-in generally stays current and there was just some specific with 2016 as to why 2010 must be used. Also, looking for overall comments whether the add-in requires a significant increase in support resources due to Microsoft updates, user breaks, et cetera. Chuck, this one's coming a little bit out of left field, but what do you think? Maybe you have uh, some advice for Alex. Uh, again, this is another one that uh, I wouldn't hesitate to probably touch base with support to ask them uh, the, the questions. Uh, also to uh, check the resources to, to uh, find out what are, what are the uh, uh, required supported uh, versions of, of uh, the different apps and, and everything that we use. So uh, again, it probably would be quickly answered by, by a support call. Uh, not not a not as a support issue per se, but but they could answer questions for him. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and try to do one more here. All right, this next question comes to us from uh, I'm not sure if it's Eagle or Eagle, um, but the Eagle has landed. The Eagle has landed. He is now on the show. Let's go ahead and see what he has to what he wants to know about formatting text from a chat bot and inserting to ICWS chat. Eagle writes, hi everyone, I have a customer using a third party chatbot on the front end. 
When the customer no longer wants to talk to the chat bot, the chat can be sent over to a human. What would be the best way of getting the chat history of the chat bot into the human chat so that it looks nice? I do receive the chat bot text as an, as an attribute, so there is no problem getting the text itself and injecting it as is to the start of the human chat using the send text tool step. But it is very chaotic because there are no breaks or separators. My only possible solution would be to use a loop to inject separately each line of a list, but this could become heavy for long chats, right? And probably not the ideal solution, but the only thing I can think of. Does anyone have any experience with something like this or could possibly offer some insight? Eagle, we flew out of the nest and took you to our very best expert. Chuck, what do you think? Any advice? Uh, you are really uh, getting out of my wheelhouse now, but uh, uh, I'm going to go old school on you. And, and a lot of times I would uh, take and copy and paste it into a Word doc and, and see if I couldn't do any kind of formatting through, through, through the uh, 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 Microsoft Word. Why not, right? Couldn't hurt. All right, cool. Um, we don't know how helpful that was, but hey, sometimes the old school ways are the best ways. So maybe that'll be what Eagle is looking for. Chuck, let's see if we can get a few more in here real quick. Question comes from Jaden. He wants to know about IO headcount forecast stats documentation. Jaden writes, hi all, does anyone have any experience with this table? IO underscore headcount forecast stats. I'm looking for documentation to help me understand what the fields and values represent. For example, there's a field called interaction type and I see values of one, 25, 27, et cetera can't find any information anywhere on the web. Um, what do you think, Chuck? Any advice that might help Jaden get started on this topic? Uh, I would probably try to start with the data dictionary. Uh, all of the optimizer tables are uh, uh, labeled with IO underscore. So anytime you see IO underscore, that tells you that it's an interaction optimizer table. And, and uh, uh, within the data dictionary, if, uh, if you, you look for any of the IO underscore tables, that, that should lead them in the right direction. And, uh, and the columns should, should be identified as such. So uh, uh, a couple of things that, that people aren't aware of is number one, you can do a function F1. And when you do that, it brings up a uh, interaction optimizer where, where, where uh, you can go in and do a search. You can, you can either click down in to, to uh, get to different areas. Uh, what's really nice is that if you're inside the product, a lot of times it will take you directly to that particular section. Uh, so, so that, uh, uh, that, that's one nice thing that, that, that you can end up doing. Uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, inside Optimizer itself, when you go to help, uh, you can go down to uh, um, getting started. And then there again, you can drill down into different areas of the products uh, and this is not just optimizer, obviously, but but uh, 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 so so sometimes you can go, go in and and and, and uh, do what you need to from in here, and uh, uh, do your searches and stuff. So ho hopefully that'll help uh, navigate the product as well. Yeah, uh, that, that's great. And then Jaden, actually, I wanted to go ahead and just share something with you, just because it's the first episode. I wanted to share a uh, resource you might not be as familiar with, and it's called the Knowledge Network. Um, so the Knowledge Network is its own site, which we can get into maybe on another episode. But I wanted to show you the flyout that exists in the community because it offers federated search across Pure Cloud um, or Pure Connect channels. And so actually, oddly enough, um, I like this because it searches the community on top of the Resource Center. So you have a couple of options. And when I did a search for the uh, tag you were looking for, the first thing that came up was your uh, question here. But what I thought might be helpful are these next two links because it looks like they have some definitions that uh, might be able to answer some of the fields you were looking for. Um, and if not also, um, I know you didn't get an answer in the community, uh, but anyway, Jane, uh, we hope uh, between what Chuck and I suggested, you can find some help along the way. Can't say for sure that it stumped you, but let's go ahead and roll the dice again and see if we can get another question going. This question comes to us from Tina. Tina wants to know about callbacks. Tina writes, hello, has anyone had agents report that the parent interaction will disconnect during a callback? I watched and listened to the recording and could see 
the parent interaction showed as disconnected while the agent was talking to the customer. It happened almost as soon as the call was connected. The callback was nowhere near the timeout and two minutes into the call, the parent interaction was removed for IC with only the child being visible. The interaction ID shows the call disconnected right away, but there is no interaction ID for the child. Now, Chuck, obviously I know um, you probably haven't experienced this bug firsthand, but what advice do you have for Tina? Any, any suggestions? Uh, the, the, the best thing I could recommend would be, uh, she's got the uh, call ID and, and uh, to use that to uh, maybe uh, try and trace back through any, any of the tables and stuff like that to, to uh, um, identify uh, pieces of that. Uh, the other uh, thing would be that if this happens continually, uh, unfortunately, she might need to open a support ticket with, with, with uh, Genesis support. Cool. Perfect. Makes a lot of sense to me. All right. That concludes our first episode of the show. Pretty easy, right? We certainly hope that you enjoyed it and maybe learned something in the process. Just as a quick reminder, uh, coming up next Tuesday, we are going to do an Ask Me Anything on the topic of dashboards and reporting. And that's going to be led by Greg Cole. So be sure to check that out and join us. It's a great chance yet again to, inter to uh, interact with some of our experts and get some of your questions about dashboards and reporting answered. So hope to see you then. And if not, maybe I'll catch you in the next episode of the Q&A show. Have a good one, everybody. Bye. Thanks for tuning in for this week's episode. We hope it was helpful and maybe a little bit entertaining. Each week, our host and experts review community discussions and debate what content to discuss so your voice matters. Do we miss something? Do you have a question for the show? Let us know. Join the conversation at the Genesis online community. As a Genesis customer or partner, you can create an account. Just click the sign in button found on most pages and follow the necessary instructions to create an account. Also, feel free to email us at qashow at genesis.com. We'd love to hear from you. If this is your first episode, welcome. You can view our entire archives. Go to the helpful links panel found on most community pages and find the QA show archive that interests you. We appreciate your support of the show and the community. Cheers.